Hi, it's Malcolm from Microspray. Today I'm going to be going over capacitors, what they do and why they fail. So capacitors come in different shapes and sizes, uh, some with fly leads, some without fly leads. The capacitor, in layman's terms, is a battery um, and it will charge up and then when you turn the motor on, the battery would help it, almost like a starter motor in a car. So the starter motor starts the engine, the capacitor starts the motor. Uh, without this, your motor is going to be stalling, humming or buzzing uh, and blowing fuses. Um, it's a little bit more technical than that, to be fair, but if you want to know exactly about capacitors, there's plenty of videos online. The most common one that we use in the Kranzel world for the portable machines is the 40 microfarad. The numbers on the actual specification sheet, you're looking for the biggest number on there, um, which will indicate the microfarad. Um, the symbol I'll put up here, it looks like a UF, and it'll usually say that there's a tolerance of these capacitors of 5% plus or minus. So with that, you've got 42 microfarad as the highest point um, and 38 as the lowest point. Anything under the 38, you will get the motor to stall. It won't start properly. It'll probably be humming or buzzing. Um, and it'll most likely be blowing fuses. If it does work and the capacitor is low, so you've got a really good power supply, but it's running, the motor's gonna be out of sync with the proper electric supply and the, the hertz and waveforms and the sine wave and all sorts of different things. And you've got a risk of overheating the motor and burning that motor out. Um, so it's always good to change these if you detect them low or if you start getting blowing fuses more and more. The reason these capacitors go is sometimes it could be just old age. Um, they don't last forever. Uh, they're, they're constantly getting charged up like a battery and discharged, charged up, discharged all the time. Every time you let go of the trigger, pull the trigger, turn the machine on. So they don't last forever. Sometimes they explode, swell, um, you'll see all the silver gunk coming out of them and then you obviously gonna need to change them and usually you'll see that as uh, like a swollen or it'll be it won't be perfectly cylindrical you can test these if you've got a, an electric meter that will be able to test uh, I'll put the symbol up on the screen as well what you're looking for if you do have an electrical meter um, you've got to make sure if you take these out and not to touch these wires and make sure that it's completely discharged before you do anything like that. Um, I've never ever had a belt off one of these. Um, I don't particularly want one. They're not usually charged up when you take them out, but if there was a fault with the machine and you disconnect it, it will crack. Uh, so if you need to test it, be careful. Just double check that it is completely discharged before you test it. So usually on the motor specification, it will tell you what capacitor is needed for the motor to run perfectly in, in tune. Um, you know, depending on which one it is, the bigger Kranzels use the 70 microfarad, uh, the smaller 1050 range use the 35 microfarad. And again, the smaller the number, the less tolerance that you will have. So the bigger the number, you're going to have a little bit more tolerance between it, but it's going to take more hammer to try and start a bigger motor. So I would advise against if your machine has a fly lead on it, not to just make your own fly lead with connector terminal blocks um, unless you properly insulate these. Um, personally, just, just get the correct one. Both of these are 40 microfarad. Um, but this one's on the Kranzel, this is the original Kranzel one. Just use this, it's not, not worth the hassle and using something like aftermarket. So capacitors can go with old age. Um, they're constantly being charged and discharged as you turn it on, plug it in and out and turn the machine on, the motor's taking the draw from it. So they can, it can be just uh, one of those things after a certain amount of time they break down. Um, the usual 
culprit to a capacitor not working or getting too low or blowing up, as you'd be able to see any gunk coming out of it, is extension cables and not having the correct extension cable. Um, I have done a video on extension cables. I'll leave that in the description. But if you get a voltage drop and all the amps go up on the machine to try and compensate with that, this gives more stress to these and it's got more chance of these blowing up uh, and then the machines having a fault so if you're using extension cables uh, or a really poor power supply as well you know like an under underpowered generator that could also damage these uh, in the long term anyway if you catch it quick enough it's just a matter of replacing these out and then away you go for the same amount of time as you've had it before so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you want to know anything else about capacitors or you think I've missed something, let me know in the description. I might do a version two. As we used to put screwdrivers across them. I can't say that, can I? Because it's like <laughs> health and safety's got to come mad, haven't they? <laughs> used to melt the screwdrivers with it. So yeah, don't do that. If you found this video helpful or any of my videos helpful and you want to buy me a drink, there's a link in the description.